Hey, hello again. This is Ben here with Stu on the Lake. So I'm I'm still down in Iowa. This is a week in Iowa, and I do most of the film work down here. So this I did uh, a couple days ago. I did the first watercolor video, and uh, you sh haven't seen that. You should go back and check that out. It was uh, received pretty well, and uh, I thank all you guys that uh, uh, for that. And I'm getting a chance to put the studio in the studio on the lake, showing some different art forms that uh, I like to do in my time off. I I'm not an expert. This is Christmas card time, and these are very simple. Uh, trust me, I can paint a lot better than this. Uh, I certainly can't paint to the point where I could make a living at it, uh, but I do enjoy it, and it's fun. So that's a recap right there of the first first video, and uh, th this one I'm going to show you how I go about uh, cranking these cards out. These cards go down uh, to, uh, in this case, this year, they go into a gallery down in Madison, Wisconsin, and uh, they all get, uh, they have an envelope that goes with them. I print them on, uh, or I paint them on cards that I buy, I don't know, 100, 100 cards in a box on, on uh, 140 bond paper. But here's how I go about uh, making a bunch of them because they're a pain in the butt. And they'll, they'll go between 5 and $10 a card, um, ready to, ready to, just a Christmas card ready to go. So here's the same setup that we started with yesterday. Uh, that's uh, where I keep my watercolors. Um, if I were to take a guess, I would say there's probably 150, maybe 200 bucks worth of paint in there. Unfortunately, this is uh, like all art hobbies; it's not a cheap hobby. When you pay seven to twelve bucks for a uh, uh, tube of paint, and then you pay about the same thing for a brush. And uh, the nice thing about watercolor brushes is they're not like oil brushes. You don't have to uh, make damn sure you wash them out or they're, uh, they'll dry hard and they're ruined. So we're going to use the same setup with the exception of the back of a large, uh, this is the back of a, the, the dark color is the back side of a tablet that had uh, watercolor paper in it, larger watercolor paper. But here's the, here's the card. So there's an envelope. I showed you that's on the side. There's 100 envelopes, 100 or 50, I can't remember. And if you're really interested, I'll try to find the, the lid to the box and uh, give you that, or I'll look them up, and I'll tell you where you can get those. And I, and I really don't even know uh, the cost of those. I would suspect they're probably $30, $40. So we're going to use, since these are really simple, we're going to use the palette. And uh, the palette's on the left there. And for those of you that are just trying to get into painting, uh, a palette means several things. One, it used to be where you had your thumb stuck through the big oval. Uh, Bob Ross style, you're standing up, you're painting. That's a palette, a painter's palette. Um, more significance on that palette is the colors that you choose to paint with. You've heard of Picasso's blue period and things like that. Uh, people change up their palettes. When we get a little deeper into this, I'll, I'll show you a couple of my uh, landscape palettes with colors that I choose. And then uh, uh, I'll show you a general palette and then this one right here we built on the left there We built it off the colors of the rainbow. So it's brighter Roy G. Biv if you uh, remember back in school When they were trying to teach you the colors of the rainbow. So I took these cards They're double folded and I made sure I had the right side on there. So I paint both sides I put four of them or eight of them, four per side for eight and then uh I just flip it around and paint. And I'll paint four of each one at the same time. So forgive my hair in here. I got an idea. I'm gonna. I got an idea for a camera mount. Uh, I'm doing this down in Iowa on a table. And when I when I get back up uh, north, I do have a little painting uh, studio in this section of uh, one section of the house uh, with a drafting table where I sit and paint. And I will uh, rig a camera over that so you you don't get my hair in the middle of it it'll be a little more professional so this is going to this is the whole thing is going to start running at two times and i'm going to show you how i crank these christmas cards out how i'll end up with in the next couple of weeks here uh probably 100 100 of them maybe 150. so this is a funky christmas tree and this is one style of this Christmas tree that I do. I do another one, and I'll, I think I'll do a, a, a video on that one. This one's just straight, simple. The watercolor paper is not wetted, and I'm doing kind of a dry brush technique on this. And the, the second one that I'll show you, uh, I think there's some of those early Christ, those Christmas trees you saw like this style. 
that you saw in the beginning portion of that uh, have a little bit more color saturation or whatnot and I did that with a round brush and I twirled the round brush and it's a lot it's a little more of a wet technique but uh, the intent of this was to just do simple and uh, they read pretty well uh, when we're done and I, I want the color to start out uh, fairly pigmented and then kind of fade away and then I'll put a little bit of cross color in there as you'll, you'll see as we go along but you're not going to get the fourth one just because of the camera angle and the way that I'm going but uh, I left that in there and didn't edit that out while I'm painting the fourth card simply because it gives you a chance to take a look at uh, um, the one or two first cards really show up and it gives you a little more time to think about them so I'm just choosing colors here and I'm not being particularly careful about how I do that I'm going to come back and address these a little bit uh, I'm not particularly fond of these but these these seem to sell really well uh, people like them and they see something in them and you see that I, I'm tagging on occasion I'm tagging into that other color and it's starting to run down in and give a different uh, hue and that's the beauty of watercolors and as we get further into this I'm going to show you some techniques uh, that I play with and uh, in future videos on how to how to bring the best out and that's what I really like about watercolor it is hard to control but there are things you can do and I'll show you as we go along if you if you stick with it and we stick with the series I'll show you how to to make those uh, do what we want them to do or get fairly close and then as Bob Ross used to say the happy accidents sometimes are better than uh, the other and you try to recreate it and in some cases you can it has to do with where you put a drop of water where you did something when you sprayed it if you're gonna spray the whole thing how you tilted it at a particular time uh, if you if you watch and you pay attention and you're a little bit more anal than I am uh, you'll notice something that you did and it becomes a technique instead of an accident so this side is going to be Christmas trees there'll be four because I can't stand to paint eight in a row I can I can stomach four and the goal is to paint them really fast if you think about this these are for sale it, uh, if I were to do one of these, just to say uh, I were to do you a card, you as an individual, and, and I wanted it to be uh, particularly special and something really important, I would take a lot of time. It would take me uh, probably 20 or 30 minutes per card to, uh, to paint it, maybe even an hour. I might let it dry and do different things, and it would come out quite perfect on that. So... So I'm going to show at some point a different technique that it's a little uh, gives a lot more um, translucence to these uh, trees, and I'm just going to from here on out I'm just going to be doing one. I just wanted to show you in this video uh, how I went about doing uh, the production. Instead of painting just one card, I'll paint uh, four at a time, and I'll cycle through. I run probably ten or twelve different patterns I don't try to get too much crazier than that there will be a few uh, one-offs in the in the cards that I sell like I said 100 150 cards a year kind of thing I, I do sign all the cards just for the heck of it uh, it's not a vanity thing uh, I just wanna I think that if you're doing artwork uh, and Jordy Johnson uh, agrees with me as if do a few to other people that you should sign your work. Uh, my mother-in-law did a lot of painting. She took a lot of art classes, uh, but she never let anybody see her work. And when she passed away several years ago, uh, we found all of her materials, but very little of her work. She didn't like the stuff that she was painting. I did see some of it, and, and it was awesome. Uh, absolutely nothing wrong with it. Uh, my daughter has a, a couple paintings, a uh, painting of, that she did that she didn't like. Uh, but by all means, if you're doing artwork, save it, give it away, uh, but sign it. You never know uh, who may appreciate that in the future. And uh, don't, don't be a harsh judge on yours. We, I do this because it's fun. And sometimes it comes out to be an interesting piece. And sometimes other people like it. So, But I, I don't do it for other people. I do it for myself. And I do it because I enjoy it. So... Uh, it's nice that we're getting back to the or getting to the original concept when I first started all this I wanted to do a studio and show a little bit of art and uh, mainly wood carving 
and that sort of thing and occasionally the painting and then occasionally uh, some uh, work with uh, the pottery wheel and that sort of thing I've always enjoyed art so let's uh, well put the little balls Christmas balls in there and I'm just kind of varying in the colors I'm not getting too much into color theory here I, I try to uh, I, I do read up on it and look at and look at it or have over in the past and I've forgotten most of what I, I know uh, and I'll revisit that as I start putting out some of the the videos so that you get the uh, the true scoop as it as it is uh, I, I'm going to put out a, the whole lesson series like I said I think I'm going to start off with somewhere around 15 this will be number two I'm going to leave the numbers in there so uh, if you miss one you, you know that one, two, three, four, five, and you can just check them off. And by all means, uh, subscribe. Check out the other folks down there. I'm trying to encourage Jordy to do some painting. Uh, I, I was surprised by the number of comments on the people that I, that normally comment on the wood carvings that were uh, a little bit shocked and surprised and said that they also uh, paint or do watercolor and various different things. At some point, we'll go into oil. I'm not going to mess around with acrylics. I don't uh, paint on paper in a traditional math matter with the acrylics. I do paint uh, decoys with acrylics and that sort of thing. So it was kind of interesting. I was out uh, just before I, I did this today. I was I was at Target and I thought how it might be fun to pick up a kids paint set. So $1.99 I've got a kids paint set. I'm going to do a video on that uh, against my I don't know how many colors are in that thing. Eight, ten colors that I've gotten this deal here at uh, to the tune of let's just say seven so 60 bucks for the paint that's in that palette on the left there versus a dollar ninety nine now I'm gonna get on a soapbox here uh, it has to do with uh, woodworking tools it has to do with carving tools it has to do with uh, heck even you know all the way down to gardening tools there are uh, entry level uh, beginner fake if you will uh, an example of this would be the dollar 99 paint set for kids and then I said in the last video when you go to watercolor paint there are considered to be three grades there is the student grade meaning uh, you're taking an art class you don't know what the heck you're doing and you crank out tons and tons of whatever the teacher has for you to draw they crumple up a paper bag throw it in the middle of the table and you're supposed to draw it you're supposed to go home and draw uh, six utensils out of the uh, utensil drawer in the kitchen, that sort of thing. So you're cranking out a lot of material. It doesn't make sense to, to use high quality paint. But guess what? It has the beginner, or not the beginner, the student grade has less pigment in it and hence it's cheaper. Uh, a lot of times the carrier or the medium that's with that is a little bit different too. So then you go between the three grades, then you go to um, artist grade and artist grade is uh, somewhere in the middle and then you go to professional or professional artist grade which is the highest so number one has less pigment middle has a little bit more and then the third one has what they'd consider to be an optimal number of pigment now each of the different companies that make paints uh, have different ratios of their pigment and they have different formulas for their pigment so you will find uh, different uh, companies make different things. Like, uh, I don't remember the company. I'd have to look it up. But I only use uh, one specific company for my oils. And the reason for that has to do with the pigments and the carriers that are in the oils. And I like the way they work. And I do most of my oil painting with a palette knife and a little bit of brushwork in kind of an abstract style. And I'll show you that uh, one of these days. So this first one, I went ahead and did this, the extracurricular stuff around there, and that's just a little six star. And then I picked two or three colors, and that gives it a background. You can see that, and there it is. And then I went back and I take a yellow and put it in the middle of the darker colors. And these other ones I'm going to leave plain. They kind of look like, I guess the appeal to these, if I were to guess, would be and you can see the colors are not uh, running and mixing quite as much as they will when I, I redo this with a different brush technique but people seem to love them so there's the four they're not done I'm gonna give them a treatment but we got to flip sides and now it's time to go to the snowman 
So pretty straightforward and simple, and that is one absolutely terrible circle. Uh, and keep in mind I'm doing this on a table I normally don't. I'm normally on a drafting board and it has a little bit of a tilt to it. Or, and as you know, I like to sit on my butt. Uh, I will even take this and sit in a chair and paint from the side. So, the goal again is not we're not doing fine art. We're trying to do Christmas cards that portray Christmas. And again, the same scenario here. You're going to miss the third or the fourth one, depending on how I set this up. But I'm doing all four cards in sequence, and I'm doing them fairly fast. We talked about this in the first one. If these cards are going to go uh, for, with an envelope and the plastic and the whole nine yards are going to go between five and ten dollars per per card, um, I can't afford to take or can't make any money. How's that? By doing one card at a time and taking an hour to do each card, so that would be working for basically five dollars an hour. But if I can do four cards, and I can do these four cards in half an hour, you can see that I can get closer to my uh, uh, self-imposed, and this is a terrible wage, uh, $20 an hour for doing this. And basically I do this in my time off and goof off. And, and I can assure you that my day job uh, flying EMS helicopters uh, pays substantially more than $20 an hour. So it's, it's almost ludicrous to, to compare the two of them. Uh, and now you know why artists are starving. But we, that piece I put on there, uh, you see I left the gap in the face or in the, in the head. I tried to make the head big enough and now I'm coming back, I'm putting in a black. The carrot was also outlined in a black and it's not really a black, no, it's a Payne's gray. If I, I don't you buy blacks in any of my colors, I mix, I mix for a black because it, it gives me a warmer uh, black. And there'll be more on that later on. So this is a really simple guy. He's looking up in the air. He's going to get some snow, and you'll get to see that effect later on. And again, I'm doing four of them. And I, the hardest part about this is to keep your hand out of the one next to it. Now, on these cards, you, you won't see it here. I will take an art pen, a uh, fine line in some cases, and go back and put in a little bit darker smile lines because the... The one thing about watercolor paint is it, it does, it is almost translucent and it's not quite as dark. Okay, so we got a carrot sticking up in there. We're not putting any eyes in it. Don't have to worry about that. We got a smile and now I've got a green and you'll see that at the end. And we're putting in the rim of a stocking or knit cap. Again, there's, there's not a whole lot of artistic to this. This is pretty simple. And, simple, and basic and anybody can do this and if you practice uh, one you build one and then you start cranking these out you'll get so that uh, like this you can pretty fast in production so th this is probably I, I think I ran most of the stuff in here you, you got very little without editing and I ran it at twice the speed uh, for the most part. So there's probably an hour, hour and a half in this and the reason it took a little bit longer than normal is because I have to uh, stop and, and mess with the, the filming. Again, uh, the technique I'm using is, is a dry technique and it tends to leave more pigment. Uh, if, you, if you dilute it with water you get less pigment but it flows around and it creates that kind of translucent uh, sparkly effect. So there's the rim, and again, I'm leaving the uh, the fourth one's not in the frame, just to give you an idea of what's going on. I'm not being real particular. I'm coming back and putting a, a little bit darker shadow in there. And this guy, I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to where the light's coming from, because it's not fine art, and I don't care. And then I'm going to uh, do a, a technique at the end, a splatter technique. So he needs... Uh, hands up as in whoo it's snowing how outstanding is that and I'm using a uh, sienna color on this I believe it's sienna it might be orange heck I don't know I'd have to look I will come back over this 
with a little bit of the Payne's Gray diluted down, just a very thin line to give it a little bit of uh, uh, like a bark texture, I guess, for lack of reference. I'm not spending a whole lot of time. I'm not thinking a whole. I'm not doing a whole lot of thought on how I'm making these branches. I am trying to make them a little bit wider at the bottom and a little bit finer at the top. Here's the black. So while that's wet, I'm putting in one uh, very thin line, and it will bleed and run across the branch, and it gives it kind of a um, a bark look to it, as well as a little bit of uh, context and contrast. So in wood carving, you're creating shadows by cutting the planes and various different things where the light would pluck, come across a piece. And in painting, you're creating the shadows by putting a different, a darker color in there. And you're creating the highlights by either leaving uh, that portion out as negative space or you're painting in uh, a light color. So here we've got uh, cadmium orange. A word of caution to those of you if you're going to go out and uh, buy some paints. Like I said, I would think I would be uh, err on the cautious side. Initially, go with the basic colors, or better yet, look up an artist on the web that you like the style of painting that they're doing, and see if you can get their palette. Uh, a lot of times, the artists will share the palette that they're working with, and uh, that's worth its weight in gold because then you don't have to figure out. Uh, what colors to get the only downside to that would be uh, I do some strange things with my palette I mix colors in a funky way and just because I gave you the palette doesn't mean that you could look at what I, I my artwork and figure out what the heck happened there so here goes a hat hats are pretty straightforward uh, nothing particularly creative about this and you'll see I'm, I'm still again using a, a more of a dry and I, I have the water on the same side so you can't see what I'm doing. Yesterday I had the paint on one, water on the other. Uh, I put the paint in and now I'm using a little bit of water and kind of letting it uh, get out there and translucent. I'm leaving a tip on there because he's going to get a uh, green pom-pom or a green ball. And the, the, the temptation here is to think you screwed it up. So if you were doing just this guy all by himself, one of them, and you started painting, you'd think, man, I really screwed this guy up. But one of the benefits and one of the neat things about doing a whole bunch of these cards is you stop and ignore the mistake. So if I were to make a big booger on one of these, I would ignore it and try to save the card. And uh, a lot of times when I'm all done and I'm doing this real fast, there'll be a couple that uh, turn out better than others. And I can't tell you why, they just look better. So if you're looking at those hats, you can see between the three, four hats that you can see there, they, they're all just a little bit different. I'm coming back and putting a little more paint on the top, and then that will bleed sort of down, but not completely all in. And I, I apologize, this is about going to be about 30 minutes, but uh, it doesn't make sense to me anymore to cut the videos down to, to 15 minutes or so. If you're you're liking it, enjoying it, you'll watch the whole thing. If you're not, uh, then you can uh, fast forward and go through it rather than try to edit two videos. So the green pom-poms are going in now. Twice the speed, but you've got an idea of really kind of how fast I'm painting these. And I thought they needed a little more delineation just on that one side. All right, so here's here's the fun part. How do you shade them? Uh, well, you got just a, a circle there. It's like a crayon coloring. It needs a little bit more snow, and, and the, I talked about it yesterday. Snow has and, and white has kind of a bluish tint to it. So rather than paint everything around the snowman blue and leave the snowman white, which would uh, preclude doing this fast, you can certainly do that if I'm going to do a, a snowman a bigger piece, a study piece, or a standalone. I would probably paint the snow around and I would leave the snowman white. And I would do that with masking and I will, uh, I will show you at some point here in the future how that mask on, uh, on watercolor works. It's a pain in the butt. It takes a little bit more thought. Now, here's a neat technique that uh, you see how I got a little dark on my pigment there. 
too much pigment, not enough water, and that third guy. And all I was trying to do was just give a quick one over the world shade of this guy in blue. And I believe this is cobalt blue. So I've got a paper towel in my hand and I'm working basically with water at this point. And again, I'm doing free brush strokes. I'm not trying to get uh, fancy. I'm not trying to color inside the lines per se. But I'll take that paper towel if it gets a little crazy and rub that off. And if you put a big old drop of red right in the middle of the card, drop some water on it, take a uh, paper towel or a piece of tissue paper and you can blot that off. All right, so this guy, I think I'm only, I don't remember how, I, I did all the snowmen with the uh, little uh, flake, little uh, three buys. So this is like a three star, one, two, three hash marks. Uh, they're not perfect. And then I change colors. I'll do two or three, four colors maybe. I did yellow. I'm putting in an orange. I'll probably pick up a blue and then a little bit of red. And I do those at random. This kind of gives it a sparkly one over the world. This guy needs to look. He's looking up like, oh, thank God it's snowing. Um, of note, interesting note, I find. Uh, it's cold in Wisconsin. I like the winter. My wife likes the winter. Uh, we, we enjoy that. Um, I used to live, when I was very young, for a couple years out of college in Nebraska. And I thought that was the coldest place on earth uh, that I'd ever seen coming from Oregon. Uh, when we went to Germany, they were like, oh, my God, it's freezing in Germany. It was not cold in Germany. And now down here in Iowa, the fall is coming, and people are freaking out. They're like, oh, my God, it's freezing. It's cold. It's 45, 55 degrees and gets down to maybe 28 at night. And I like that. I, I don't put a coat on until it's about 45 outside. So there's a reason people like Florida, and there's a reason why I don't like Florida. So he's getting his highlights uh, in. He got the blue in there. And again, I'm doing all four of them at the same time. I just kind of zoomed in on the two. Here's the money shot. This is the point where people think... Uh, that I might have ruined it. So I'm building a really, really uh, soupy wash. And I'm using a fan brush. And uh, I'm going to flick it. So I'm using it against a different brush. And you can start to see, you'll start to see little flicks of blue. And I will move around randomly. This is really easy to go berserk and overdo it. Because it's actually kind of fun. This part here. So I will do a wash of uh, blue, or maybe so in some cases a light uh, um, indigo if I'm doing snow. And then you'll see, and I'm I, out of frame up here, I'm doing the Christmas trees that I did earlier. And if you'll remember three of the Christmas trees, I did not do the little star technique behind it uh, like is on these guys uh, around it. To fill in the space if you just leave the figurine out into it it looks like pigs in space and it looks like you forgot to do the art uh, at some point in the future lessons i'll start talk about uh, we'll talk about the basics in art and framing this is uh the gauche again uh, uh, watercolor people think that this is blasphemy mm -hmm. they would prefer that you went back and use masking for every little snowflake that's on that guy's hat you could put a little drop of masking uh, which is like a gum rubber cement and then you paint around it and when you're done you rub the masking off and you get the white underneath now that is a cool effect it takes uh, it's a, a, a kind of a challenging technique sometimes to work with but that is what uh, the purists would have you do rather than use this gouge now when you get to the art purist and there's going to be some of you out there that are watching this that uh, actually are art trained and we'll decide that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, and you'd be right. Uh, like I said, I've got two kids that uh, are formal, formally trained as artists, have degrees in art. And this would, just by the addition of the, the gouache, or the gouache, depending on how you want to say it, would be considered mixed media. So if I were to take a pen or a pencil and then add to this paint or change different kinds of paint, I start mixing the different mediums or media and it would be a mixed media thing. So I don't get hung up on that. I do what I think uh, what's easy for me, what's fun for me, and what makes it gives me the look that I'm looking for. 
if this needed some acrylic on it I would certainly certainly do it although it's a pain in the butt if you want brilliant brilliant paintings use oils to me uh, acrylics and some people do wonderful work with acrylics acrylics always look kind of washed out to me and they, they look just a little bit lackluster and then I love watercolor because you can do all kinds of cool things with watercolor so how do you do production I, I showed you earlier when I put this tape I'll take this tape and put it on my jeans or on a uh, tail and this is just uh, standard masking tape and by and large it, at that point it doesn't tear the cotton fibers now right here this one you'll see and I'll only show you unmasking the one this one is starting to tear the cotton fiber and I can't get it to stop so I go from the other side I have a theory um, one of the things that uh, that watercolorists like to do people that, that work primarily on this art they'll tear the edge of the paper so instead of having a cut edge you'll have a print that has a uh, 140 200 bond paper or something like that and it's cotton paper fiber paper and the edges will be torn I think they developed that personally and I'm probably wrong because when they took the mat or took the uh, tape that they were holding the watercolor print down to it tore and they went damn that ruins the whole painting so they went ahead and just tore the all the edges to make it look the same I will take a little bit of water and fix that part back down and since it's a card it's a gift card it's gonna be treated badly um, I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference uh, it shouldn't be tore all to hell uh, some of them you have to discard but if it tears a little bit and uh, that's not a big deal you can preclude that by putting a little fuzz on the tape either run it on your shirt run it on something take some of the sticky away and that tore a little bit in that one corner and pretty nicely up in that corner so there's that we're gonna wrap them up here I do sign them like I said and I use an art grade pen just to do that and there he is that's one they're unique enough and different enough if you do four of them that someone's not staring at the same thing I don't write Merry Christmas I don't write Happy Holidays I don't write Happy Hanukkah on them because I want somebody to be able to do that themselves if I were to put Merry Christmas on on this card unfortunately I would I would automatically eliminate a few people if I were to put happy holidays on this I would annoy a couple of other people so you buy the card in my thoughts you write on there what you want and uh, these are the most popular this and a little different a, a little different style which I will just from now on I'm only going to show you one uh, one card and you can see how that white flicking in there makes all the difference in the world and how each of these comes out a little bit different but uh, these ironically enough are the the favorites as is the snowman and how can you go wrong I mean that's a happy looking character right so from the, the future on in here the, since it's Christmas card season I'll uh, run the next three or four paintings on Christmas cards and I'll just do one at a time and you'll get to see that and, and just but just realize that that one will get put on a production board like I just did there in the other side so hey this has been Ben with studio on the lake I'm glad to add the media to this uh, and the next one I got a wand coming out for you guys there's a little close-up and they, they look much better in person so like comment share with your friends and subscribe by all means that's uh, I appreciate uh, your support this has been Ben with studio on the lake